Hello, good morning and welcome to the piano at Hamwood Park. I was tuning the instrument yesterday and I was found that I was able to do a demonstration which shows how the unequal temperament actually uh, has an effect on the resonance of the piano. And I'm putting the camera right next to the strings here so that the camera will pick up the um, resonances in the strings. So I'm going to make some pretty odd noises. Um, I'm going to start down here on F and musically that note is actually composed of harmonics. That note's slightly flatter. Now this actually uh, is the harmonic series and brass players are very used to this with no vowels played on a French horn. And so those are harmonics. Um, and that's getting the air in this pipe to vibrate in different numbers of ways. And strings do the same thing. So back at the piano, there's F. And I'm going to play that note silently. So I'm going to lift the damper on that silently. And I'm going to play the harmonics. And you can hear them all. If I go the octave down, so we're going to go this octave here. doesn't ring because those are not on the harmonic series but that one does so if I press down all of the notes together in the octave we'll hear which ones sing I'm going to do that for the next note, which is F sharp. Now, this one, um, in an unequal temperament, these notes are not so much on the harmonic series, so they don't ring. So the, the, the instrument doesn't resonate to the same extent. Let's do G. A flat now that won't resonate so much here here's A B is quite out of tune, so there may not be many harmonics that resonate. So here, the fifths. being the third and being a wide third it's not actually near enough to 
the harmonic note to particularly excite that resonance in the string. And as a result, B major has a funny tonality and a lack of root, which adds its character to whatever you're playing. Certainly, Liszt skated around on the main mic on an unrooted key. Here's C. And you can hear the difference between and on the B. That's lasting much, much longer. So here's C sharp. Again, that is singing much more than that. Here's D. And you can hear the way in which that is singing much more than on B. So, because that's a wide third and off the harmonic series that doesn't sing so much as the F sharp on D because that's really on the harmonic and so it sings and so D major is going to sound a very sweet and resonant key here's E flat Here's E. And I'm going to go down the octave there. Just that one. And I can hear oh, oh, oh. Can you hear that note? doesn't sing so much as that carries on for a long time because it's in exactly it's exactly in tune whereas this is slightly sharp so it's, it doesn't carry on for so long so that's dead almost like a, a xylophone or a, a, a marimba or something but this one on D sings for a long time. So then we come back to F and in contrast that sings for a long time. So in the key of F the third sings. In the key of E that's fairly dead. E flat that's fairly dead. D sings. D flat fairly dead. C rings beautifully. B fairly dead, nothing there, no resonance. B flat is a bit dead. On A A sing nicely. A flat dead. G F sharp dead F and it's in this way that the piano will sing in the keys where there are good resonances and 
sound in keys where there aren't good resonances, it's going to sound different. Composers relied on those differences. <laughs> 